Hey guys, in this video I want to go over the three-phase uh, motor upgrade for the G0602 CNC conversion. When I was originally planning my CNC conversion, I was not going to do a three-phase motor. I just didn't think I needed it. I didn't want to spend the money or the time doing it. And then immediately after getting the CNC conversion finished, I realized, yeah, for my needs, I had to have the three-phase. Mostly for the variable speed, but also... Uh, it's a little easier to have Linux CNC control the motor via the VFD uh, software drivers. So um, the motor that I used is very well documented, lo documented. Lots of people have used this motor. Go check out video number two for in this series that has the spreadsheet or the PDF to get that part number because uh, I can't remember what it is. It's a Leeson motor and it bolts directly in place. The only issue I had was the uh, where the pulley ended up being located on the shaft and I'll show you that here in just a second so first you just need to remove this pulley plate it also holds the door to the back of the lathe and then some people are able to just slide their pulley right off the motor I needed to use a puller and I have one of these cheap Harbor Freight puller sets and it slid off with relative ease not easily enough that I could just work it off by hand but it wasn't really stuck on there so uh, the new motor comes with its its own shaft key, so you don't need to reuse this motor's key. And then the real nightmare here is trying to remove that lower left nut. Um, you'll want to remove the lathe splash pan. I didn't have mine removed in this shot uh, off of the back of the lathe. It's only three cap screws, so it comes off very quickly. And that will give you better access to that nut, but it's still quite a pain. And what I ended up doing was buying a, uh, a gear wrench uh, one of those ratcheting end wrenches so I could get back there and, and that worked pretty well. I have a cheap Harbor Freight set of those, but they have a lot of slop in between each click of the ratcheting mechanism. So it didn't work quite as well. Uh, then everything goes back together pretty easily. You can see where I have that, I have that splash pan off in this shot. And uh, I ended up needing a spacer. Let me show you why. After I got this pulley installed, the alignment was not quite correct it was about three sixteenths of an inch um, which is what you're seeing right here that gap between the pulley and my ruler so take the pulley back off put a spacer in you know make one and then uh, put the pulley back on you're good to go v belts do allow for some misalignment so it's not really critical uh, if it's not perfect but it will shorten the life of your pulley or of your uh, belt i wired mine up with uh, 12 gauge which is just super overkill. I went to, I think it was Lowe's or Home Depot looking for 14.4 in this uh, rubberized, it's basically extension cord you can buy by the foot, but they didn't have any 14.4, so I bought 12.4. It's so overkill. Get yourself eight, some 18 gauge. That's all you're going to need. This motor only pulls like four amps. You don't need 12 gauge for four amps. You can see the black, red, and white are my... Uh, three phase wires and then the green is the ground I'm pointing to the two lugs where you're supposed to put the ground but I didn't want to route another wire back out of this little box so instead I just grounded to that lower left screw and that works just fine e either way you're grounding to the chassis of the motor so it's gonna work and if you turn your motor on and it's going the wrong direction just swap two of the phases and you'll be fine here you can see in this photo uh, U V and W are the three phases black white red those two on the far left, that black and red, those are my uh, 220 volt coming in. That white wire on the far right next to the W, that's my uh, my ground or neutral in this case uh, coming in. And uh, it's easier to swap those wires here instead of on the motor if your motor's running in reverse. Now that green ground, it's actually grounded to the uh, to my electronics enclosure. So it goes to a chassis ground and it doesn't get grounded to the VFD. All of these wires uh, that were being used, m what you're looking at mostly has to do with uh, the operating the contactor, which I'm no longer using because I'm using some relays uh, in my setup. And then also that forward reverse switch has got a lot of wires attached to it. You don't need any of this. Pull all of it out. None of it will be reused. And the reason is the only thing you're going to need is depending on how you're going to wire up your breakout board i have three buttons now and three pairs of 20 
three, it's either 22 gauge or 24 gauge shielded wire. And e one pair goes to each button. Uh, I'll show you those buttons here in just a second. Um, apparently I'm still removing all of the stuff. <laughs> so uh, that does take a minute. The red button is my e-stop. The green button is my cycle start. And the yellow button is wired to my pause. Uh, so I can pause and unpause in Linux CNC. That yellow button is not on the spreadsheet. So check the description below for a, uh, a link to where you can buy buttons like this. And um, also that gray, you know, the gray aluminum you're looking at, that's actually just the original cover flipped over. Since it's, uh, it's symmetric, from left to right, you can just reverse it. I actually did sand it and buff it a little bit to make, cause it was pretty scratched up on the backside for some reason. And, uh, yeah, that's it. It runs really well. And I, I have to say besides doing the CNC conversion, this is probably the single best upgrade you can do for your lathe. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.